Hey guys, for those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Chris. I'm a board certified family medicine doctor and I'm going to be starting my sports medicine fellowship this summer. I get a lot of questions about medical school and so I thought why not talk about the five things I wish I knew before starting medical school. I'm a first generation American and I'm the first one in my family to become a doctor and I didn't know anyone personally in the medical field that I can go up to and ask about oh, what is medical school like, what is residency like, and what does it take to become a doctor. I went into medical school completely blind. I didn't know what resources to use, I had no idea what to expect, so I really wish I had a video like this where it talks about the things I'm going to be talking about today. So I hope this video is helpful for anyone who's interested in getting to medical school and becoming a doctor. First thing that I wish I knew before starting medical school is to study smarter and not harder. Now in high school and college whatever way you study for your exams is probably not gonna work in medical school. What do I mean by that? Well let's say you have an exam coming up in about two weeks and what do you do? You procrastinate, you go out, you kind of forget about it until the very last night of the exam you take out all your notes and you cram all night, take your exam and you pass and you go, hooray! <laughs> no. No, that is what I'm talking about. That is not gonna work in medical school. Everyone knows medical school is tough, right? Nobody tells you that medical school is gonna be easy. Now, as a pre-medical student, I was thinking, how tough can medical school be? I went through four years of undergrad. I took physics, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry. I've had pretty tough semesters. It can't be harder than that. Yes. Yes, it can be a lot harder than that. In college, I love to use flashcards when I study. And I remember when I was taking my finals for Orgo 1 and Orgo 2, I had a stack of flashcards. Flashcards really worked for me. So when I got into medical school, I decided that I was going to continue this way of studying because it's always worked and create flashcards for all of my classes and exams. And I quickly realized in medical school, probably around day one or day two, that making flashcards for my classes to prepare for my exams was almost impossible and that's because as a medical student especially your first and second year the sheer amount of information that you're going to have to memorize every day is too much and making flashcards is a waste of time. So before you start medical school, it's very good to know what resources are out there to help you thrive in medical school. I personally think the best way to study in medical school is by active recall. So the way you do this is you take a topic that you want to learn and you create questions based on that topic and then you repeatedly test yourself on those questions. Now using flashcards is a great way to use active recall, but creating physical flashcards in medical school is almost impossible and a big waste of time. Now in medical school, there is a very powerful tool that almost everybody in medical school uses. It's called Anki. And Anki is an app where you can create online flashcards like Quizlet, but it takes it to another level. So Anki uses space repetition that presents information to you at the optimal time for retention. What's great about Anki is that on their website, people upload their decks onto the website for other people to download and use. There's a deck on that website that medical students who love Anki use to help them prepare for step one and step two, and it's called Zanki. So you can really see how powerful this app is, right? You save paper, you save trees, and you also get to use space repetition to really solidify your knowledge on the material that you want to learn. I personally wish I knew about this app in high school or in college. It just again would have saved so much time and it's just a way more efficient way to study. Now what are the other resources that medical students use to help them do well in their classes and help them prepare for their board exams? As a disclaimer, I'm not getting paid by any of the brands that I'm mentioning in this video today. These are resources that I've personally used to help me do well in medical school and in my board exams. And I really believe that the products that I'm going to be mentioning is going to help the medical students in their medical school journey. Now, all I do ask is if you thought this video was helpful, please give this video a thumbs up so that the algorithm knows that this is a useful content and that it can share this video to anyone else who's interested in becoming a doctor or is about to start medical school. All you have to remember is the mnemonic UFAPS. UWorld, First Aid, Pathoma, and Sketchy. 
So what is UWorld? UWorld is pretty much the go-to question bank medical students use to prepare for their board exams. Their explanations to all of their answer choices, including the incorrect ones, are very detailed and they are an excellent resource to study. First Aid is pretty much the Bible for medical students. It has everything that you need to know about medicine. And what's great about this book is that it also has great mnemonics that you can use to help you remember things better. Pathoma is a great resource to learn the high yield topics for pathology. They also have online videos. And again, this is a great resource for your classes and to prepare for your step one. Now Sketchy creates animations and helps you remember things better by associating names and things with pictures. Now for me personally, before I knew about Sketchy, I had a very difficult time remembering things for microbiology and pharmacology. That is until I discovered Sketchy. After I used Sketchy, micro and pharmacology became one of the easiest classes in medical school. And that's how powerful Sketchy is. Now I know that Sketchy covers other topics now, but I've only used Sketchy for microbiology and pharmacology so I can't really talk about sketchy for those other subjects but I highly recommend that you check out sketchy for micro and pharmacology. The last resource that I love to use in medical school is called Boards and Beyond. Boards and Beyond has online videos that covers pretty much every topic that you will learn in your first two years of medical school. I just thought that the way they presented the materials and the way they teach the topics was just so well done and they cover the high yield things that you're gonna have to know to do well for your step one and step two. To summarize, there are so many resources for medical school. Don't waste your time and money buying all of these resources. Pick a couple and stick with it. And again, the most common resources that people use to do well in their first two years of medical school and for their first board exam is UFAPS. Now, I personally used UFAPS and used Anki to create flashcards for topics I had a difficult time memorizing. Now, there are people who love, love Anki. So instead of using the UFAS, what they did was use the Zonki deck for Anki. Second thing that I wish I knew before starting medical school is the benefit of taking medical school classes as a pre-medical student. In the first two years of medical school, you're gonna be taking anatomy, physiology, immunology, histology, pharmacology, and many, many, many other courses. As a pre-medical student, I never took anatomy, pharmacology, histology, microbiology. So when I got into medical school, this was the first time I was being exposed to it. And so I just had a very difficult time, whereas my roommate, he was a anatomy TA for a couple of years, so when he went into medical school, anatomy was a breeze. For me, I just had a very difficult time with anatomy because it's brute memorization and this was the first time I'm learning about this topic. So my recommendation is if your college offers anatomy, immunology, pharmacology, histology, microbiology, take all those classes, just get exposed to it. Even if you're not getting taught as in depth as if you were being taught in medical school, your future self is going to thank you. And now when you enter medical school and you're being taught these subjects, you're going to have a much easier time remembering and memorizing these things. And medical school will be way less stressful and a lot easier than is someone who's learning this for the first time in medical school. And that's my second advice. Take as many medical school classes as you can in college as a pre-medical student, even if it's not required. Your future self will thank you and medical school will not be as stressful. Third thing that I wish I knew before starting medical school is FOMO, fear of missing out. Before starting medical school, I had a social life. On the weekdays I was working, but after that I got to play basketball with my brothers for as long as I wanted to. And I could go to the gym and lift weights for as long as I wanted to. And then on the weekends, I could go and meet my friends, go watch movies and do whatever I wanted. That all changed on the first day of medical school. Starting on the first day of medical school, I had at least one or two exams every week. I realized that I had to study all day to memorize the sheer amount of information that we're being taught every single day. My library and the study room at my medical school became my home and the apartment is only where I stayed for a few hours to sleep. Because medical school is so stressful and rigorous, it's very easy to feel like you're missing out on things. You're on your phone and you see your friends all living their life. They got a great job 
have they're going on all of these extravagant trips maybe some of them just started a family they're buying their first new car they just bought their new house and here you are in a library or in a study room all day every day studying broke and in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and trust me, I know what it feels like to have FOMO because I went to medical school in New York and I remember walking to the library every day, including the weekends to study all day and all night. And I would be passing by the restaurants and see a group of people having fun with their friends, see people going on dates. And here I was just spending all my day studying, broke and in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. But I think it's very important to remember that the sacrifices that you are making right now is going to pay off in the long run, 100% guaranteed. My advice to combat FOMO in medical school is to delete your social media because it's just so easy to get distracted by what your friends are doing that it makes you feel like you're missing out, but you're not, you're not missing out. You are working hard and making sacrifices now to become a doctor. And becoming a doctor is not easy. If it was easy, everybody would be a doctor. Remember that medical school is temporary. Once you graduate and become a doctor, you're gonna have your social life, you will be able to go on those extravagant trips and buy a new house, buy a new car and whatnot. Remember that you're not the only one feeling FOMO. There's other medical students in your class that might be feeling the same way. And I promise you that they probably are feeling the same way. So another great way to combat FOMO is to talk to your medical school friends and you'll realize that you're not the only one feeling this way. So delete your social media accounts, talk to your medical school friends, focus on your work, work hard and don't let FOMO distract you from becoming a great doctor. The fourth thing that I wish I knew before starting medical school is the importance of taking care of yourself physically and mentally. Now again, medical school is very, very, very tough and you don't have a lot of time outside of studying. So it's important to use that free time that you have effectively. Find an activity that you can do for 30 minutes that can distract you from the stresses of medical school and helps you zone out and and just makes you feel like you're at peace. For me, that was working out. I love to work out and lift weights. Before medical school, I would work out for about an hour and an hour and a half, but I didn't have that luxury when I started medical school. And so in medical school, I learned how to condense my workouts to 30 minutes. And so that was my anchor in medical school to help me zone out and just be at peace. There was a study that showed that running for 15 minutes a day or walking outside for an hour reduces the risk of major depression. Physical activity not only helps you physically, but it can help you mentally and make you feel better. And there might be a time when you do feel lonely and just really overwhelmed from the amount of stress and work that you have to do in medical school. And it's important to know when to ask for help and what resources are out there for you. A lot of medical schools have their own counseling services and mental health professionals that you can take advantage of. I would recommend reaching out to your family and friends and even your fellow medical students regularly. Even if your family and friends may not understand the intricacies and the stresses of medical school it's just gonna make you feel at ease and better just to vent out your stress now the last and fifth thing that I wish I knew before I started medical school is the importance of not comparing yourself to other people remember in middle school high school and in college every grade that you entered you and your classmates all started at the same playing field this becomes different when you enter medical school you have to remember that everyone entering medical school is coming from different backgrounds some people may have been a paramedic or an EMT or a nurse before starting medical school. So that's why it's important to just focus on your own lane and not compare yourself or your test results with your other classmates. I will say that medical students can take advantage of the fact that the playing field is not equal and that people are coming from different backgrounds. For an example, in my medical school, we had someone who was a paramedic for a couple of years and he was extremely skilled in interpreting EKGs. And what he did from the kindness of his heart was hold a class for all of us to teach us about EKGs. So what I would say is if you do have a particular skill or experience that puts you ahead in a particular subject compared to your fellow classmates, go teach it to them. 
because it not only helps them, but it also benefits you by helping you retain and learn the material better. So there you have it. Those are the five things I wish I knew before I started medical school. Remember, study smarter and not harder. Take as many medical school classes as you can as a pre-medical student. Do not fear FOMO. Take care of yourself physically and mentally and don't compare yourself to other people. If you guys thought this video was helpful, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much and best of luck in everything. See you guys.